Hi everybody, uh, Ian Robson here with My Farm Education, and today I'm joined by a representative of Farm Credit Canada, and his name is Scott Yule. Is that correct, Scott? Is that how you say their last name? That's it, just like Christmas. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So why don't you introduce yourself and uh, what you do at Farm Credit Canada there? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm the Senior Director in Marketing here, and so I have responsibility over our, our products and our strategy, and Young Farmers being a big part of that. Excellent, excellent. So um, specifically today we're going to talk about the Young Farmers Loans. Uh, now Farm Credit Canada does have more than just the far Young Farmers Loan, but today we're just specifying that. Uh, perhaps in the future we may talk about uh, other loans, but today, as I mentioned, only the Young Farmers Loan. So Scott, what is a Young Farmer Loan and what are the steps of getting Young Farmer Loans? Well, a Young Farmer Loan is, it's uh, dedicated to, we define Young farmers is those under 40 years old, so mm -hmm. anyone under 40 years old can apply for one, and they're for to buy things. So buy your first, uh, buy first, second. It could be uh, your third or fourth or fifth purchase as well. But to uh, for those people under 40 to buy uh, farming assets, and um, and the maximum that we allow under the program is uh, half a million dollars. Okay, so it's and, 500 thousand uh, dollars, of course. Yes, 500 thousand dollars. And it's got a, one of the benefits, or a couple of the benefits, are that it's got a capped interest rate at uh, prime plus a half, and it has no fees. So that's uh, that's what makes it quite attractive. Excellent. And in terms of in terms of steps, was your next question Ian? Uh, not yet. I was actually going to just clarify uh, for some people. So uh, prime plus half. So right now, half you mean 0.5 percent, correct? Yes. Yeah, so three and a half percent prime right now is at three percent. It's been there for a couple of years now. It's been pretty stable at three uh, percent. Okay, so, uh, so if it's three three percent, you said so three would be three point five percent interest rate. Yeah, and so that would go if the prime went up, then uh, your rate would go up with that as well. Of course, it would yeah, fluctuate automatically. It would fluctuate based on you know what prime is basically. So, That's but. Right. Yeah. Uh, a quick note though, like 3.5% is very low, so for new farmers out there, don't get discouraged, it's actually pretty low, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very low rate, lowest, is a, I mean, Prime's as low as it's been in, in decades, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing to, to note though, because it is based on Prime, it could go up as well, depending on the uh, ec uh, economy and whatnot, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so you yeah. mentioned people under 40 are eligible. Is anybody ill-eligible, so someone who can't get the loan? Well, as long as they meet our criteria to be able to pay it back and secure it, those are the those are the big things for sure. But uh, yeah, in terms of age category, anybody under forty is eligible. Anybody under forty, there you go, guys. New farmers out there, if you're under forty and you're looking to get some money, Farm Credit Canada is a good place to look. All right. Um, so, how do you evaluate a candidate? So, you know, are there certain things you look at when you're looking to uh, give money or take not take give money to somebody? Well, the big thing is we want to make sure you can pay it back. So that's the that's the big part. We we aren't doing anybody any favors if we aren't uh, doing the farmer him or herself aren't doing uh, the work required to make sure that they can pay it back. So that would be a bit of a business plan to make sure that they've they've got the wherewithal to to pay the money back as it's as it's due. So that's the I would say that's the biggest thing for sure is just to make sure that that's possible. And how do you determine whether someone can pay the money back or not? Well, if they've been farming previously, we'd look at their past before their past um, income and expenses. So, if they're doing, if they're filing by income tax, looking at their income tax, seeing what they've had for revenue, what they've had for expenses, and uh, and then looking at the new purchase and what it might add in terms of income and expenses, and then as well as the new payments, whether or not they will, um, you know, there'll be enough income uh, to cover cover those new payments. Gotcha. And you mentioned something about uh, a business plan in there. Do you absolutely need a business plan when you're applying for a Farm Credit Canada loan? Well, I would say it. I would say it helps. I mean, ultimately, uh, one way or another, you're likely going to have one. Um, and when we talk about business plan, I think a lot of people get uh, really nervous. But uh, really, what we're looking for there is your just again, just to, to your ability to repay the loan. So, and all the things that are associated with that. So. You know your assets and liabilities. So a net worth statement is uh, is a big part of it. Your your income and expenses, as I just talked about. 
you know, knowing what um, you know, knowing, knowing what uh, you were able to do in the past, and that's quite often the most predictable thing of what's going to happen in the future is what you're able to do in the past, uh, and then. Of course, if you didn't have any past year's financial information, you know a lot of research around you know what what types of things people can do in their area for you know um, yields and and those types of things, uh, and 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 building a projection. It's a lot harder to do, of course, when you don't have the support of past information, but to build a projection. And we're also you know interested in you know where your markets are, where you're going to sell the new product or the uh, the you know the more the the um, when you expand the expanded products that come out of that, where that's going to go, uh, and and all those things. So we want to know where you're selling, how you're selling, for what price, are there contracts, or what other things are involved. So just kind of everything that's going into your decision to buy that parcel of land or not. I guess we we need to know that. So it's not a, you know, it's not a, it's not six months worth of work either. Just kind of want to know what your plan is, where you want to go, how you want to get there. And those types of things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, as I mentioned before in my blog, um, having a business plan is actually a great way to, you know, know who, what you can sell, what your prices can be. Uh, you know, things like, you know, what I can sell, how much I can sell it for, what's the market like out there, is it competitive? Uh, so, those are the types of things they're kind of looking for, like how much you're going to be able to sell your crop for. So, if you are a new farmer, uh, having a business plan is going to be a great way to kind of get you, uh, give you an idea of what's out there and what what you're against kind of idea. So, now Scott actually mentioned that um, one of the things he mentioned was if you are a new farmer and haven't had any uh, you know, previous crops or anything like that, you know, you need to do your research and that's a really important part of what uh, Scott's talking about is research, you know, what crops you can grow in the area, uh, how much do they sell for on a regular basis, things along those lines. So doing your research is really, really important. Um, just uh, building on a bit, uh, a bit more of that, do you, uh, does it improve your chances of having, uh, getting a loan if you have a business plan? Uh, I would say so, absolutely. I mean, just uh, because then we have some, we have some um, idea that you've thought this through, and it's what you really want to do. It's not uh, you're not buying it on a whim, and you think this would be a really cool idea or something like that. You've actually thought it through. You know what it'll do to your farming operation and how it'll impact it, uh, and those types of things. So it is a, it's a. I mean, we look at. Uh, at the individual as well when we're lending to money, uh, lending money. So that gives us some confidence that he's um, uh, prepared and uh, gives us some 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 comfort in in the individual that he's a professional and he's really committed to this project. So there you go, new farmers. Business plans definitely help you out. Um, the next thing uh, we're going to talk about is um, if you're looking to buy a farm, for example, and uh, you need a down payment. What's considered as a down payment? Like in I, one of the things I mentioned in my blog earlier on was about additional security. Could you touch on that a little bit, Scott? Yeah. So I mean, what you talked about uh, in your blog was about um, you know needing a lot of cash. So for yeah, I think in your example, uh, the, the person you were talking about said was told they needed twenty five percent down, and so that's pretty typical to have twenty five percent equity in, in the security uh, for FCC, so we call that kind of loan to security ratio, so 75% loan to the, to the value of the security. Um, so that's pretty typical across other farm credit and other financial institutions. It might be higher, it might be lower. Uh, some of it depends on the strength of the rest of the application, so it's one of those things where if you've got a really, really strong application, they've got really strong uh, income, those types of things. Uh, your financial institution might be willing to, to you know, negotiate a little bit on that, but typically it's in that twenty-five percent range, and that doesn't have to be um, that it's doesn't have to money. be cash. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, to be honest, quite rarely is it money. Even our, even our strongest farmers rarely come in with a, a bucket load of cash and say, "Here's my down payment on our, yeah, yeah, on yeah. our, on our land purchase." It's typically other, other security. So if you had. You know, if you uh, you know you bought a house out when you finished university and you've been paying on that for the last ten or fifteen years, you've got quite a bit of equity in that. That could be your security. Uh, same if you had some land, you bought some land when you're outside the university and and you've paid that down quite a bit. And in the meantime, land prices have, have, have 
escalated. Uh, you can use that for security. Um, those are the types of those are the types of things that could be used for additional security, as well as uh, you know. To be honest, the majority of people that are starting agriculture today have family or uh, that are involved as well, and so that's typically, I would say, where the additional security quite often comes from. Again, mm. dad or your uncle might not have cash laying around, but they might have some equity in a, in a parcel of land that they'd be willing for you to use to uh, get that first start. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, quick note. So additional security doesn't necessarily mean just money. Uh, it could mean other things. As Scott mentioned, it could fit mean things like uh, if you already owned a property, you could use that as collateral. Is that what you're saying there, Scott? Yeah, as long as there's, as long as it's not fully financed, right? As long as there's some equity in it. So that's yeah. the thing. We would, we would look at, you know, is it free and clear? If it's not free and clear, that doesn't, that, that might still work. Uh, it would just look at how much equity is in there. So if you have hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollar parcel of land, and you only owe twenty thousand dollars on it. There's eighty thousand dollars of available equity for you to use as leverage to secure another loan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's uh, that's a real key part uh, about getting the money. Uh, if you if you need to get money for a new farm, for example, uh, having some sort of equity in something else is a really great way to get that uh, additional sec uh, the security down. Like could be a down positive cash, but as Scott said, that's kind of rare actually. So it's more likely that you'll have some equity in some property, and you can use that to um, to get the loan essentially. And sometimes it's a combination of both. So yeah. you know, you, you, again, you might have been working on a farm for the last ten or fifteen years, and you've got, and you've got some money saved up, some actual cash to make your first purchase, and, mm -hmm. and but it might not be enough to to cover off your loan. So it could be a combination of both. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you are, you know, starting out farming, probably you might have a house already, for example. So you use some of the equity in your house to buy a farm, sort of idea. So that's that's kind of the the idea. Uh, it's not easy to jump straight into farming if you have, you know, done some planning. And again, that goes back to having a business plan of some sort because that is very important to know, you know, what do you want to do with your farm. Like, you know, what are the pro markets going to be like? Things like that. So farmers out there need to really need to do some research, well, especially new farmers need to do their research and kind of get an idea as to what they're getting into. And that's where you need to be serious about this. It's not just let's try it out on a whim, basically. So, all right, uh, let's do a hypothetical situation. So take me through uh, the process from A to Z, Scott. Uh, let's say I want to get a farm. The farm costs $500,000. Take me through the process of how I would get approved for that kind of situation. Well, I mean, the the best thing you could probably do uh, again, um, you, you know, start working on a business plan. Start working on it right away. Actually, you should probably do that before you uh, before you settled on a piece of land. Uh, you should probably be thinking about what you want and and therefore know when a piece of land comes available that that's actually what you do want. So you should decide that in advance. Then you're not uh, then you're not um, again kind of. Uh, uh, buying it on a whim just because you think you have to have it. So you should actually start your business planning as soon as you possibly can. So you For will sure. know what you want. What you know will know what you want when you see it. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, just uh, uh, um, you know, work on that business plan. See where you know, make some goals for yourself. Where do you want to be in five years? Those types of things. And then when you do see what uh, will help you get there. Um, yeah, I would say at any time actually talk to your relationship manager, whether it's at FCC or your other financial institutions that are out there, and and get a good idea what they what they would want. Again, typically, like I said before, they'll want to uh, if you have a business plan, they'll want that. But at the very least, uh, a, a balance sheet, so all your assets and liabilities. So gather up all a list of all your assets, whether you've got land. Um, buildings, um, equipment, uh, personal items, those types of things. So build a, a whole list of all your assets, and then, of course, your liabilities. So any mortgages against that, any any uh, medium-term loans, uh, any short-term loans, any operating lines, lines of credit, those types of things. Your visa, how much is outstanding on that? All of those to build a balance sheet. So to come up with your equity, so mm -hmm. your assets minus your liabilities. And then um, 
again with regards to whatever you're buying make sure that you understand um, you know what what kind of if it's land what kind of production you can get out of that land what what additional revenues you'll get out of that so there's again if you've had you know if this is an addition to your existing uh, land base then uh, you'll likely be able to get some you know idea from your other land base what's possible out of that land if it's not there's things like crop insurance data and a number of things that you can use from uh, from online that will tell you what your yields might be on that property and and then generate uh, a bit of a marketing plan what you're going to do with that uh, when you're done and, uh, and and do some research I guess and then um, you know come come to your financial institution and bring that with you and, and see what's see see what they have to say Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, just to clarify for people who uh, need some clarification on that particular some particular terms, uh, Scott mentioned assets and liabilities. Uh, so, I think in layman's terms, that might be something like people you owe money to and the money you have. <laughs> that about yeah, sum up, Scott. Yeah, I guess uh, you know an assets uh, you know typically is something physical that you can put your hands on that has some value. And so, yep. what is the value of those? What is the value of those assets? And uh, again, what any any debt that's outstanding against those assets? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Scott, you mentioned things like credit cards, mortgages, whether you have a car, a house, any types of those things. Find the money you owe, so your liabilities and the money you have in your assets. Awesome, great. Yep. Um, and uh, one thing we already touched on before, so I'm not going to ask this question, but we kind of touched on it, so I'll just rehash it slightly. Is that if you don't have, um, you know. The money right up front, you can use things like um, uh, collateral from other pro uh, other things like houses and whatnot. So, and uh, finally, I'm just going to touch on one thing that I want to go back to is uh, what can what cannot what can what can't you use the young farmer loan for? So we talked about what you can use it for, but what about what you can't? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, the 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 it's designed. For purchases, so uh, you can't use it to refinance. So if you've already bought a parcel of land and, like I said, you have some equity in it and you want to use some of the equity for other purposes, you can't you can't refinance it. Uh, that's the that's the big thing. I I believe that uh, again, it has to be an agriculturally related purchase. So it can't be can't use it to buy a cottage at the lake or anything like that. It has to be you know land or equipment and those types of things. Cool. And and it's got a limit of a uh, half million dollars, so you can't you can't buy a million dollar property with that particular <laughs> product. Uh, yeah. but you can. I mean, it's not a it's not a limit though. I mean, that's the those uh, that interest rate cap and the fee waiver only relate to the first half a million dollars. So that's uh, yeah. You can you can borrow more money than that, but uh, not under the program. Yeah. So exactly. So Scott mentioned that you can get you can get more you know more than five hundred thousand uh, dollars, but it not under the Young Farmer Loan Program. There are other programs yeah. out there, um, but you know that's for another 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 video, I guess. So yeah, the, the first five hundred thousand is available to you under yeah. the program. The yeah, remainder yeah. isn't. Yeah, exactly. So and like Scott said, you can use it for anything agriculturally, just about. Um, of course. Look at the fine print, what you can and can't use it for. Uh, that's definitely on the Farm Credit Canada website. And also, on the Farm Credit Canada website, there is a place where you can get um, you know, information about what's a, what a business plans on there. So check, check that out as well, because they give you a really good idea of, uh, as to what they're looking for specifically. So Yeah, if you look at the, on our website under learning events, there's a number of, uh, of, of free learning events that are going on across the country that you can actually... Um, you know, there's some on, some on building business plans and understanding your financial information, and so those are free to anybody that great for young farmers. Yep, great top tip there, guys. Anyways, I think that's it for today, guys. Uh, once again, this is Ian Robson from My Farm Education, and today, once again, I was joined by Scott Yule from Farm Credit Canada. Thanks very much, Scott. Thank you.